And I trust all of you are keeping safe as well. Over here at the Multimedia Group, we are keeping very, very safe. We're in the thousands, and the numbers keep increasing. So that is a message enough. My name is Nathaniel Atto. Yes, the man who has love for sports, and the man who brings you the Joy Sports Link every Saturday. Of course, today we're starting um, a little later because of an extension to uh, news file. You know, Samson and the guys like to do that to me sometimes, eh? but it's all good. So as always, the house announcement. Well, it's uh, 0244340437 the WhatsApp line, which you're very accustomed to. Also, remember we're streaming live on Facebook. It's Joy997 FM on Facebook. You can also follow us uh, with our live tweeting on at JoySportsGH. Place your questions and your comments anywhere on my Facebook wall, Nathaniel Atto, Citizen Atto. Citizen Atto on Instagram, JoySportsGH on Instagram. And of course, uh, you know, via our WhatsApp uh, console. We'll be glad to have all of those questions and all the comments. So today is May 9, 2020. The date brings back some very horrid memories of the painful loss of more than 100 fans at the Accra Sports Stadium following a game between Accra Hearts of Oak and Kumasi Asante Kotoko. A commemorative event was held earlier today at the entrance of the same venue where this rather unfortunate incident happened. We'll do a quick assessment of where we are regarding the nation's responsibility to the families affected and, of course, um, how much we're doing in terms of adhering to the provisions in, uh, you know, the paper that was, uh, you know, uh, put together by the Okujeto Commission. Also, today, a personality in focus is a man whom you knew to have a lot of energy on and off the pitch. Now, he had a big dose of youthful exuberance, which reflected in his look, his lifestyles, and his key actions. Um, at a certain point, he spotted dreadlocks. And of course, he loved the aesthetically pleasing things and could also raise a hand if you cross the line with him. Now, on the pitch, he combined with Michael Essien, Sule Ali Muntari, and Stephen Apia to be known as the best midfield quartet that Ghana, one of the best midfield quartets that Ghana ever presented to the rest of the world. Now, he played for club and country with a lot of devotion and uh, is one of our finest players not to have featured at the FIFA World Cup. He is also seen club action here in Ghana, in Scotland, in Russia, in Israel, in the United States of America, and also in the Netherlands. Now, following his retirement, this man is on a very big journey, which is seeing him build his capacity in coaching. So, the once flashy young lad who loved his cars and other things now has a new look. Dreadlocks gone. New focus, new platform. So as a youth coach at the Right to Dream Academy, he has big aspirations and has also charted a new path as a football pundit. Just in case you forgot, he featured on Supersport as a pundit for the last edition of the Africa Cup of Nations. Yes, I'm talking about the man, Laie Kingston, whom a lot of you like to refer to as Bra Laie. My guest here in the studio. On the Joy Sports link on Joy 99.7 FM, uh, like I mentioned, uh, it's good to be in your company always. And um, we will be going all the way till 2 p.m., the top of the hour, 2 p.m., right here on this dial. Let's begin with May 9. And um, the main state official who led the commemoration of May 9 today is Honorable Perry Okujato, Deputy Minister for Youth and Sports, who's joined me on the phone lines. 
Hello, Honorable Perry Okuja, too. Thank you so much for joining us on the Joy Sports Link. Thank you, Natano. Mm. Uh, this year, you, you haven't made an appearance, you know, uh, in the studio. We need to work on that. <laughs> <laughs> the year the year is just a few months gone so there's still there's still room to do that yeah and of course talk about that um you know it's making me it's tempting me to chant our accolade but i i restrain myself <laughs> <laughs> I, i'll restrain myself uh, good to hear from you um you know I, I saw i saw the images i saw the still images of um you know the events that was held today um and immediately you know, I mean, you're looking at, you know, all of you ad adhering to social distancing, you know, wearing your face masks. And it just brings back all of these very sad memories, um, you know. Uh, well, yeah. what can you say? Signs of the times. Uh, unfortunately, the world is facing a pandemic. And um, we have to adhere to the protocols that have been set out by the President of the Republic and other than Kukufada. And to send the clear signal to the sporting uh, fraternity that as leaders we need to adhere to to these things for them also to follow suit. So that is why you saw us in our mass uh, keeping uh, you know distance from each other, and then after the event, washing our hands to make sure that uh, whatever we may have picked up during the, the ceremony is washed off. Yeah, and, and added to that, of course, I mean, it was a clear indication of the times, and then it also brought the rather unfortunate memories. Um, can you just quickly run us through, I mean, what exactly was done today? Well, we all know um, what transpired on May 9, 2001. It is um, something on the... Uh, on the front banner when it comes to football in Ghana and a day that any football-loving person would not want repeated in the history of our country. What we've done over the period is, like you talked about, the Ukujetu Commission, uh, government put in place uh, a trustee fund to take care of the victims and uh, families that have been left behind. Uh, that uh the trustee has done some work in that regard and i'm hoping that you would speak to some members of the trustees to bring you up to speed of course um we're doing that we're, we're speaking to uh you know the welfare officer of the uh board of trustees who will be speaking yeah, to very shortly and they would bring us up to speed on what they've been able to act uh, to achieve over over the years but not you know that year in year out for the last 19 years uh a retreating ceremony is is held by by government led by the Ministry of Youth and Sports and the National Sports Authority in sure. collaboration with the Ghana Football Association and the clubs. So this morning we went out there as early as seven AM to lay a various wreath from the government and people of Ghana, from the football fraternity from the clubs, you know, representatives from the clubs and uh, the National Sports Authority. Uh, ostensibly to mark 19 years of the event and to uh, sort of discuss where we've come from, where we are today in terms of health and safety, the management of our facilities. Um, I represented the Minister of Nabwa Ezekisiyama, who could not attend because he's attending a cabinet retreat. So I, I spoke on his behalf and try to, to bring us up to speed on what we've been able to do so far. Uh, mainly the things I, I reiterated were that we had to improve on our facilities by making sure that we expanded uh, our gates at the stadia. If you look at the type of facilities we had back in 2001, and the work that was done between 2001 and 2008 when we hosted and 2008. If you look at the investment that went into uh, sporting facilities such as the Kraspo Stadium itself, uh, the Isipong Sports Stadium, uh, Babayara in Kumasi and Tamale, for instance, it tells you that we had learned our lessons from what happened in, 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 in May uh, 2001 
and have continued over the period to try and build on making sure that our sports facilities are safe. Uh, we adhere to health and safety uh, measures within within these facilities. And then also to make sure that uh, the turnstiles, the gates that give access to the public when they come to these facilities are done in a certain way that can manage the crowd so that uh, what happened in 2001 does not uh, repeat itself. Well, one of the one of the key um, you know recommendations uh, you know after the work of the Okujato Commission was completed was playing a commemorative game between Hearts of Oak and Kotoko every year to to mark this. We haven't done this. Well, on on various fronts, we've 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 had uh, games played by the two teams on other fronts. If if it's not being played in terms of a commemorative game to mark. The day that that I believe can 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 be worked on. However, we've had several uh, instances where the two teams have have had to play games in the Crasport Stadium elsewhere uh, that have you know resulted in 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 a very satisfying you know results on on both on both parts. I believe the the spirit behind uh, asking the report asking for commemorative games was for us to be able to iron out uh, the tensions and the, the differences between between the two teams. However, you, you, one of the issues I also touched on that was that as football fans, it's a responsibility. Immediately, you purchase a ticket to go and watch a football game. There's a responsibility on you as a person to comport yourself in a certain manner at such games. During the ceremony, the General Secretary of the, the FA spoke, and his point was that the FA has laid down procedures in terms of grievance procedures if any club had issues with officiating or had issues with anything that goes wrong on the pitch. And therefore, it is not the duty of a fan to either protest by either throwing things onto the pitch or protesting in a manner that generates the kind of the kind of things that uh, a response that we had from the security agencies that resulted in the, the May 9th uh, uh, disaster. And that these, these, these measures have been proven over the years. Clubs have had issues on the pitch, have taken them to the FA committee. These issues have been dealt with and resolved, and clubs have continued to play their games. And that is why we think that it is also important, apart from the, the steps that government has taken to make sure that we beef up our facilities, uh, modernize the facilities and make them, you know, state of the art, world standard. It also, it is also the responsibility of the fans to make sure that we comport ourselves uh, as you, hooliganism and all these other uh, uh, traits that affect the beauty of the game. When, when when we get out there into uh, our sporting facilities. Honorable Okujato, thank you so much. Thank you so much for, for the time. And, um, you know, you are making an appearance here one of these days. <laughs> <laughs> After COVID-19, we'll see. Definitely. Thank you very much. Uh, Honorable Perry Okujato, Deputy Youth and Sports Minister there, um, you know, on, on today's commemorative event and other things that are, or other measures that are being put in place to ensure that we um, ensure utmost safety at our venues and um, we adhere to rules and regulations to the letter. Mr. Christopher Annan is the Welfare Officer of the Accra Stadium Disaster Board of Trustees and he's joined us on the phone line. Thank you very much, sir, for your time. Hello, Mr. Annan. Well, hello, hello. Good yeah. afternoon. Good afternoon, Mr. Annan. How are you doing, sir? By the grace of God, I'm well, doing well. Very well. Good, good to have you here on the show. Welcome. Thank you, too. And uh, good afternoon to your cherished uh, listeners. Very well. Now, um, we, 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 we had quite a number of, you know, um, children who, who lost, you know, their, their parents, you know, to, to this, to this uh, tragedy and this disaster. Um, the, trust, the Board of Trustees has, uh, you know, subsequently put together, there was a fund put together to ensure that they, their education is taken care of. Can you bring us up to speed on how they're all doing? 
uh, you know, yeah. um, you know, and and what's happening now? What kinds of numbers you are dealing with at this time? Okay, thank you very much. The uh, children were 148, and the uh, diseased uh, parents or guardians were 126. Out of the 148, the fact the uh, government took the uh, responsibility of educating them from Kirk to senior high school. Uh, three of them were postmortemly uh, brought forth. Uh, out of the number, uh, the number of them were able to complete the SHS, but along the line we realized that some of them were exceptionally brilliant and they need not to terminate at the SHS level. So we offered them the opportunity to assess tertiary education. As we speak, about 20 of them have completed tertiary and as we speak now, wow, great. 12, 12 of them are still in tertiary uh, institutions, uh, UST, uh, Tech at uh, Kumasi, uh, Mini, uh, University of Education, Miniba, uh, UPSC, uh, Legon, the Legon, University of Ghana, they are there, uh, and uh, National uh, Films and Industry, they are all there, some are there, and some are also pursuing vocational training. Uh, MBTI. Yes. As uh, we speak, uh, about uh, the 12 in tertiary, we have uh, 13 completing SHS. Yeah, SHS 3. Then we have uh, another 10 SHS 2. We have one. We see that you say SHS 1. Yes. Mm -hmm. As we speak now. Wow. We, okay, so, so by. Those, okay. Who were, those who were attending the uh, procedure to uh, tertiary. We were giving, apart from paying their tuition fees, and pay, we paid their hostel fees, we gave them laptops, we gave them pocket money for photocopying and uh, other things that they may have to uh, contend with. But uh, about two years ago, we realized that uh, the coffers have gone down because of the treasury bill rate. You know, at a point in time, we were having 22%, 21%, and it dropped to 11.5% and 12%. It is just a few months back or years back that it has uh, risen to 14. So we have to uh, meet the parents and guardians and explain the conditions under which uh, we find ourselves. So we are, what we are doing now is cost sharing to those who are in tertiary education that we meet them halfway. By cost, sharing, by cost sharing, you mean now that the fund is unable to take care of uh, the fees, which was the the initial plan? The fund is able to... The initial plan was to look after them up to SHS. Okay. God, the, through the special grace of God, the government uh, introduced a free SHS. And that saved us. But nevertheless, we have to every semester give them some money for provisions and some few things so that the children will feel also comfortable. But the cost sharing is mainly with the, those in the tertiary institutions that we cannot now provide the hostel fees, pay, give laptop, and so on. So the fees is what we share. We take 50 and we also support it. So that the remaining students now that we have, all of them, will have a taste of tertiary education. I see. Um, yeah. how, how, has been, has, how, has been, sorry, how has this been received by the, by the families? So the families I mean, this new they, development, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh, yes. Initially, they were trying to say, you know, human beings, that, oh, they were use the money to take care of us. We have to explain uh, so that if we do that, the rest of the children will not benefit. It means they will have to terminate at SHS. But so after meeting them twice, thrice, they all agree that, yes, the cost sharing is the best way out. Otherwise, the, they will complete and the others will not have uh, the chance of uh, going to uh, any tertiary institution. So that is what we are doing now. Very well. So um, in wrapping up, uh, when, when does the work of uh, the Board of Trustees come to an end? As in, when, by which year will the last child or the last, um, you know, uh, ward yes. complete yes. so that your, your work comes to an end? Yes. The, uh, the child deed stipulates that uh, when the child should be looked after until the age of 21 or 
when the child completes uh, uh, SHS or uh, vocational school, uh, vocational training. So, if all things being equal, next year we have to wind up. But if we do that, to it means we will leave some of the students, the children, still in school. Those who have to now assess, uh, those who are in SHS will assess as a, a tertiary education. So we will need to be with government to discuss the way uh, forward. Mm. All right. Have you put any timelines to this? Because, of course, time is also running. I mean, in terms of engaging government on this. Oh, yes, yes, yes. In fact, if it are, we have met the minister once on this. But, you know, with the uh, unusual times that we are in, they think immediately that uh, uh, things become a little normal. If I say normal, that you can be moving up and down the school, so also reopen. We will start to reopen the engagement with government to see the way forward. That will present them a full report, what we have done, where we have reached, and what we intend uh, doing for those who are still in our care. Mm. All right. Um, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Annan. Thank you so much. We appreciate your time. You are most welcome. You are most welcome. Mr. Christopher Annan is the Welfare Officer of the Accra Stadium Disaster uh, Board of Trustees, bringing us up, up to speed on uh, the work of uh, you know the board so far. And uh, things seem to be okay. Um, let's see what our government comes up with after this uh, next level of engagement so that the, the last batch of children are, are properly taken care of. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your pastor Donzi and I bring you greetings from the Church of Christ. This is the day, a new day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and believe in him. Lord, we thank you for goodness. We thank you for mercy and for giving us beyond what we deserve. We thank you for goodness. We thank you for mercy and for giving us beyond what we deserve. But as we stand before you, strengthen our hearts and light our path like a beam. beam, beam. Are you at- so as I mentioned earlier, my man here in the studio is your man, Bra Laye, Laye Kingston. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks for having me. Um, it's good to see you. I mean, it's been a while. I mean, since you came back, we haven't uh, met. Yeah. Since you came back from uh, Denmark. Mm. Yeah, because of the... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. COVID, we, yeah we're yeah. all trying to... Stay home and then stay safe. Mm, mm. Yeah, but now I think things are easing off a little bit, so mm. uh, we have the opportunity. The numbers are going up, but well, we'll, we'll, see, yeah, we'll see how uh, it goes. But the lockdown is over, so yeah, yeah. And, and now I can see that a lot of people uh, are keeping their distance, even though when you see uh, four or five people mm. staying at least one meter mm. in between them, is is there. So uh, being disciplined, I think, is going to help all of us to fight this uh, virus if you just joined us Laya Kingston is my guest here in the studio and uh, we're doing this uh, between now and 2 p.m. keep your questions and your messages coming in it's 0244340437 we've been talking about May 9 I mean today is 19 years since uh, it happened um, where, where were you um, on May 9 2001 um, actually I was at home you were here in Accra? Yeah, I was in uh, Accra. Okay. Um, I was about to go to the stadium mm-hmm. when it started raining. So, uh, and that time I was about to sign for Acts of Hope. So I decided to, normally when I go, I sit uh, at the VIP side. Uh, but on my mind that day, I was saying when I go, I'm going to sit at, at the Coca stand, which happened to be where uh, a lot of people died. So, uh, I was there and then it started raining and then I decided to stay at home and I heard that is going to show on the television so I think that's what uh, helped me to stay at home. And Did you plan to go to the stadium alone that day? I'm planning to go with uh, two of my friends. Okay, so so, so what happened? Did you, we were, you, you we were all them? ready mm. to go. They came to my place that time I was staying at my dad's. Mm. Why, why did you decide to go... Um, you know, to go and sit at the Adekoka stand that particular day. What was the reason? Yeah, the reason was I was about to join Arts of Folk mm. 
and and anytime I go to the stadium because of the problem, my ITC and everything, a lot of supporters uh, asking questions. Uh, uh, so I decided to I, I decided to go and sit at the other end so that uh, I, will, I will have my uh, privacy. Even though that side it's it's more and have a feel of the Astro folk, folk fans, yeah, especially the uh, Chataho. Yeah, group. and they always say that the you know the, the those stands are always a place where the fans are are way more exciting than the VIP. Yeah, you can see the jama and everything is there, the argument and everything. VIP is more decent, uh, more decent over there. So uh, that place you have and people really suppress their emotions a lot in VIP. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Even though you want to react, you cannot do that. Yeah, yeah, that. yeah, yeah. Um, so. Fast forward, the game was played, and then the incident, and then the, the story started rolling. What ran through your mind? Um, you know, after the game, uh, most of us sitting at home, we did not see what really happened. So uh, after the game, you know, that's when uh, you can see here in the, in the radio and everything that uh, people are dying, they, they've been tear gas. We saw glimpses of uh, uh, tear gas flying into the crowd and all that, but we, we saw fans running down yeah. but we thought uh, the exit is yeah. the gate we thought there is a way not knowing the gates have been uh, closed locked so uh, uh, that's what caused a lot of uh, uh, disaster over there but for us at home we felt okay uh, the the police are trying to uh, uh, make sure things are going on well in the stadium calming the the, the fans down and then directing them to 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 stop throwing the uh, the chairs on the pitch and all that. So, so for us, it was really, really disappointing to hear the news and then seeing on the TV uh, dead bodies lying all over the place and all that. So, it was a very big blow to all Ghanaians, not only us fans or Kotoko fans, everyone. Mm, I see. You must have uh, counted yourself very lucky as well. Yeah, I was. I was. I was, and then, and then a lot of times, most of my friends sometimes. Uh, the two of my friends, anytime it's May 9th, they always call me and then tell me we should have been <laughs> a bit gone by now. Day. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. This is the Joy Sports Link on Joy 99.7 FM with Laie Kingston. Um, and the name is Kingston. K I N G S O N, right? Yeah. yeah. Very well. So, uh, what happened? I mean, <laughs> how come you are using Kingston and your yeah. brother? Olele Richard Kingston is using the Kingston, which is your original name. Yeah, actually the original name is Kingston, which uh, my big brother is using. Mm. Actually, all my siblings use Kingston, uh, apart from me. But the mistake uh, came from my brother. Okay. Uh, not him directly, but he was with the national team before before okay. my me. Yeah. He was with the under twenties. They went to a tournament and yeah. then uh, they put. Uh, Kingston at the back of his shirt. Okay. Through the mistake from the FA. Okay. So when I joined the National Under 17, my first passport, the FA did my first passport for me. So they put T in my first passport, which I believe that time they had the name spelled Kingston in their books. So they put T in the name. So uh, in the passport, I, I travel with the passport. Uh, I used the passport to play uh, uh, qualifying games for the national team. Then, then I have no uh, choice than to keep it the same. But with him, he he, he went to play in uh, Turkey, and then uh, he he decided to naturalize for Turkey. Uh, a lot of people doesn't know that, that he have a dual citizenship. Mm. He he, hold, he have a Ghanaian passport and then Turkish passport, and then he changed his name mm. uh, from there. So, so. Uh, that, that that was what happened, and since I've traveled with the passport already, I decided to keep it alone like that. So my kids, my wife uses Kingston, but all my siblings, the name, the real name is Kingson, K I N G S O N, like King Son, mm, son yeah. of a king. And the, yeah. the, the the name, the our actual surname is Ajay. Okay. Yeah, we from Nyongochana uh, in Teshi. Uh, we all all Nyongochana. Uh, uh, family we use Ajay but my grandfather worked with one expatriate and uh, uh, the man loved him so much and he, he was very cute man 
So the man named him, him uh, King Son, like because he liked him so much. So uh, when you go to Teshi, all his siblings, my my grandfather's uh, yeah. uh, family members use his Ajay apart from him and his uh, great children and his grandchildren. Ah, interesting family history here on the Joy Sports Lake. Yeah. Like, what happened to you? I mean, um, I've known you for years. And um, in my intro, I was talking about the the lie that we knew. I mean, the guy who brought the vim when we were going to play games. I mean, I'm drawn to Ghana 2008, that big moment where you were substituted. You came into the game. There was a, you, you brought some energy in, and we managed to qualify for the semifinal. You've done several other similar. You know, you've brought similar uh, you know levels of excellence on on to, 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 uh, you know in games as well. What, what happened to you? I mean, now we see you, you you're looking different, uh, you know, you're, you're, I think you're a lot calm, you know, th- th- there's a lot more calmness, you know. What, what happened to you? Um, you know, uh, sometimes, you know, as a, as a young boy coming up, you know, and then also uh, where you grew up, I'm, uh, I was born and bred in Bukum, okay, Jamestown, and we all know uh, Bukum at that time, even now, uh, you have to defend yourself all the time. You know, when if you, if not, they will bully you. Did uh, boxing ever attract you? Oh yeah, I started with boxing. I see. You know, because every every child have boxed before. Started with boxing, but uh, 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 you know there is football as well. We we ha- we've had uh, footballers around as well. But uh, I'm I'm from a football family, so I grew more love for for football than than boxing. But my second sport is football, uh, boxing. So, you know, anytime I'm free or I'm in Ghana, even at, at, at that time when I was in, in Europe, anytime I'm in Ghana, I like to go to boxing bout at the cross position before they even uh, put up book on uh, uh, boxing arena. I, I, I love boxing a lot. And and it's it's always uh, difficult for people at book home not to defend themselves, you know, because of the environment and all that. So when you're saying now I'm very calm it's from... <laughs> The environment I grew up in, uh, and and now, uh, as I go, I went through my career and and, and and all that. Now I'm more matured. I'm more mature. I've learned a lot of things, and I, I've learned how to control my emotions, and especially my job now. Uh, uh, I'm a role model to most of the young ones, and and as a teacher or a coach, you should be very calm. You should be very calm to explain for 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 your players to understand what you are passing on to them so and sometimes you should control your emotions because you know football uh, uh, the, the, the emotions behind the game is very high uh, my beginning of my coaching career uh, I didn't know I use my emotions a lot I react uh, sorry to say unnecessarily and all that but sometimes the emotions are there uh, but you need to control it which it, 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 you learn it through your, your, your development as a coach as well so if you are saying that now I'm more calm and all that through, uh, let me say, uh, life experience, <laughs> I'm I see. calming down a lot. I see. I see. And, and also, and also throughout my football career, I made a lot of mistakes. By there are things that uh, I should have handled it differently, but because of where I grew up, where I, I, I was brought up, uh, even though I'm right, I'm not calm. I, I remember that. Yeah, I remember one of the uh, one of the incidents at the Accra, you know, the Cart of Oak training ground opposite the national lotteries, where yeah, you know, one defender hacked you, and the next minute you were on top of him, you know, <laughs> yeah, 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 you know, um, yeah, that 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 moment, you know, you know, we are in camp and yeah. sometimes argument and every yeah, uh, Hassan Mohammed, right? Hassan, yes, yeah. Hassan Mohammed, yes, Hassan Mohammed. Yeah. You know, it, it, Hassan Mohammed, the style of play uh, for me is. If 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 he's playing now, I think he's going to get a lot of sent offs. Mm, you know, mm. because of the way he play. Mm. Anytime he comes to tackle, he doesn't go for the ball. He try to touch you, even if you dribble. And you know that uh, uh, I'm type of person that I like dribbling a lot, and I don't want to lose the ball. You know, and with him too, he's very aggressive. He wants to win all the balls. Sometimes he comes, he wins some balls, and sometimes I will have the opportunity to dribble him. To dribble him, and when you dribble him, you always have to touch you. Not only me, but Tastela always argue with him, uh, Don Bote and all those people. They always argue with him. That's his style of play. And and he's done it several times, you know. And that incident, 
uh, for me, I think I would say that I, w- I defended myself, but it doesn't supposed to happen that way. You know, yeah. if it's today, I will not. I will handle it maturely. Like I said earlier, when I was very young, useful exuberance, you know, and and it's it's something that now as a coach, I will not allow my <laughs> my players to to do that. I see. Now, um, you you are going through a certain process at uh, at Ride to Dream, you know, a, as a coach, and um, it's taking you places. You've actually even won tournaments and all of that. Yeah. Mm. Now. What what is the one key thing that you see that that you're learning that you feel that we are not incorporating well when it comes to bringing up our, our, our young ones in our football? What are some key things that you've learned that you feel we are missing out on? Let me give you an example. I remember that um, when you returned to Hearts of Oak, your last stint with Hearts of Oak, you mentioned to me that, for instance, you realized that we didn't our players didn't have confidence. And that there were days when you tell them go into the 18 yard box. There was a set piece, uh, you know, set piece situation. Go into the 18 yard box. I'll cross the ball to you. And even going into the yard, the the, the box was a was a problem for them because they were they were they were not jittery. yeah they were jittery. Yeah. Which other things did you have you noticed you know about about our development that that you feel we should change? Um, for me, I think uh, when you're developing a player, first of all, you should see his strengths and see his weaknesses. And then the third one is what you want the player to be, how you want to develop it. For instance, every academy or every team have uh, a key things that they focus on when they are developing the player. When you come to Right to Dream, Right to Dream, we want, we want players to express themselves. You know, we want players to come out. Sometimes uh, our training, session planning and everything, we engage some of the players and sometimes we give them the opportunity our style of playbook. We make sure we make sure we 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 give them opportunity to 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 bring their their opinion and all that. You know, even though you are the coach and all that, you 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 would like to engage players. So, right to dream, we would like to engage players, give them confidence, how to uh, express themselves, how to how to uh, talk uh, in public and all that. So, when you look at right to dream players, they are different from other uh, because the, it's not only about football. We have education as well. So so with right to dream is different. Unlike other other academies or other organizations that they have their, their their philosophy and all that. But but one thing that I believe uh uh can change is um giving players the opportunity to express themselves. You know, you you the coach you cannot be like I'm the coach, everything I say is the final. Give them the opportunity to. Sometimes you you just give them the opportunity when they are talking. You can have some, pick something from what they are telling you and add it up to what you 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 already have, and then it will also uh, give you the coach the confidence that what you are telling them they've and un- they understand everything. That's a very interesting point you've raised because um, then I'm asking myself where where is the limit? Where should the limit be? So for instance, a player. A game is being played. The player is on the bench. Game one, game two, game three. The player is on the bench. The player feels I'm good enough. I can play this game. I'm better than those who are on the pitch. I can play this game. So he comes to you and asks you, um, "Why am I not being fielded?" That's valid, right? Yeah, it's it's, it's okay. Very it's okay well for a coach to come, uh, a player to come to the coach. The, okay. And then ask him why you are not playing me in this game. And you have the, you the coach. You have every right to explain to the coach this and that and all that. But talking about right to game mm. it's an academy so at academy you have to give all the players a fair share okay you know so every game for instance my squad which is the u18 the senior team in the academy every game i make sure even though i have uh, 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 my core players that i believe that in a, in a very difficult game in life someone is ahead of someone someone can develop very fast even though i have my core players that i believe that 15 players that i believe that okay in, in, in any day I can start uh, all these ways but all the, t- all the time all the same you should give them equal numbers of uh, minutes for them to because it's an academy you are developing them so you need to give them playing time and you need to check we have people that will check every minute in the, in the season in the term we have uh, someone that will check every minute that each and every player has played and make sure 
they all have equal minutes on the field. What about the bit where players also will differ with what you ask them to do on the pitch in a game situation? Is that also allowed? I mean, that's not necessarily with your academy, but I mean, in building your own thought and your own philosophy around coaching, mm -hmm. is that also allowed? Um, you know, sometimes as a coach and a team, yeah. teams have their philosophy. Yeah. For instance, if let's, if let's say, I'll use us of folk as an example. When, when I signed for us of folk today and, and, and I know us of folk philosophy, this is what they want. This is how they play. You know, we have teams that we have teams that they want their players to attack all the time. We have players teams teams that they want uh, uh, their player their their team to build up from the back and 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 all that. We you 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 have to uh, have your style of play. You should have your 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 style of play. And then also, if let the player understand that this is how you want to play. And if the player goes into the game, let's say we play in four back or three back and all that out. We all know how, to, when we are building up players, you know positions that they have to be in. But, but when the game is started, players can use their own skill. With that, they, are, they can use their own skill. Even though we have a style of play, that every player has to abide by it, but sometimes there are situations that you, the coach, you cannot coach. What the player have already, he can use that. For instance, you, you, like in the final third, when you get to the final third, there are patterns that right to dream have. We have a lot of patterns that right to dream have. The moment the ball gets to the final third, players know where to stand. Half space runs, cheap balls, expect cheap balls, Spanish passes. Strikers have to expect Spanish passes from the midfielders and all that. We, are, we, are, we have all that. But sometimes we have players that when they get to the final third, or uh, 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 for instance, we've told our strikers, when you get to the 18-yard balls, 99% of goals scored in the 18-yard balls. It's not you using your laces. Instead, pick a spot, use instep in foot to uh, place the ball in the blind side of the goalkeeper. That's, that's our philosophy. In there. When the player gets to the 18 and he, he, went, he decided to blast the ball with his laces, if, even though it's not part of our style of play, I can question him, why did you do that? We encourage them to use instep a lot, but once in a while, he will decide to use the laces. When it happened, fine, you need to accept it as a coach, but try to encourage him to do the right thing. You know, once a while, how many goals have we, you've seen players shooting from like uh, 25, 30 yards? How many times do you see players scoring from that angle? How many uh, times do you see players scoring in the 18 yard box? A lot of times, 18, when you get close, the closer you get, that's why we, we encourage our players to use our attacking patterns around the box when you get to the offensive part of the, the field. The final third of the of the of the field, we use, you need to be calm and use our attacking attacking pattern. But if a player have a skill that you have to use out of your style of play, it's fine. So far as it's positive, so far as it's going to help uh, development. So far because we we have an in development, we have individual development plan for every player. You know, players they know their weaknesses. So when and the coaches will see their weaknesses as well. So as a coach, for instance, my squad, I normally, we, each one of them have in development, individual development plan. So every week, I make sure I give them some exercises that will de develop them, especially, apart from team training and everything. So, mm. so you need to check all those things. And you can see that players have qualities. If you see that you have, this is his strength, you should also help him to, to, to develop it very fast. Um, you, you, during your playing time, I mean, you, we saw you display a lot of energy. I mean, you brought what we describe as vim, okay? <laughs> yeah, and I, and I always like to refer to two key games. I mean, all of them were against Nigeria. A friendly where we recorded that four, four goal scoreline yeah. in London, yeah. and then the AFCON game, um, you know, the quarterfinal game at the Accra Stadium yeah. where you were brought in as a substitute. Now, during AFCON 2008, you, you, were, you were injured ahead of the tournament. Yeah. And at that time, my colleague Ernest Cranting, who used to head the Joy Sports team, yeah. interviewed you and the doctor had doubts about whether or not you'd be ready for the game. And then you disagreed with the doctor and said, no, 
that you have your skin and you have your body and you say you play <laughs> where did that come from like you know um especially the tournament is being played in ghana yeah know, home soil you know yeah. and uh, uh you know i was rather i was i was not not lucky yeah uh, like two months to start the tournament i turned my ligament in yeah. my ankle yeah so then so then i have to stay i had a mri scan and I have to stay like um, three months. I'll be out for three months before I start maybe playing maybe again. Rehab, rehab. I see rehab and all that. So uh, the the FA was very disappointed when they heard that I'm I'm injured, and then they gave me the time frame that I have to stay like three months and all that. So so, so you were not supposed to play that tournament at all. Yeah, I'm I'm injured, and then mm. it's confirmed. I have a uh, uh, I torn my ligament in yeah. my ankle. I had the MRI, and then it came out that I have to stay like three months. So, for me, I counted myself out of the tournament. You know, but at that time, you know, I was one of the key players in the in the, in the tournament, and I was I was in top form. I quite remember there was a build-up tournament before the the four nation the, the four, four nation, nation tournament. tournament. Yeah, I was flying. You know? Yeah, uh, I had a very good it, in. In that week, I scored like five goals in yeah. that week because I scored three in the tournament. I went back to Arts and I scored two. You know, so in Scotland, yeah, in Scotland, the yeah. same week. So, so I was in form, and then the following two games, then I got that that injured injury. Um, I counted myself out, and then there was a letter from the FA that when they called the the they picked their players, we were going to training camp in Dubai, Abu Dhabi, rather. Um, they brought in a letter to my team that oh they want me to be to come and then so that their doctor to assess me and and then check if I can. But with me, I have I have something in me. Uh, my injuries doesn't last. You know, science will tell you that uh, I'm I'm going out for like one month. Within one week, so far as I can run on on the legs, I'm, I'm good to go. That's 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 uh, mental toughness you know i'm not that type of person that i like to stay away when if if the pain is there and i can run on it i will uh, i will do that so i reported to camp so i stayed like uh two three weeks in camp they took going to training but i was going under treatment i i had treatment for like a month in 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 in, in, in arts but i was on crutches i was on crutches i came to camp and then after two, three weeks, I felt very good. You know, so one day we were going to training. Uh, and then I told, uh, I brought in my trainers. Uh, and then I joined the bus. You know, normally I would go with the bus, sat, sit down and then watch uh, the mm. training. After training, I come back home and then all that. Mm. So then I, then I, we come back to uh, the, the hotel and all that. But that day I, I felt that, oh, I can at least jog. You know, so I took my uh, trainers, I went, I joined the team. So the team started training and then I started going around the pitch. It was very painful, but I went first round, second round, third round, and I started feeling much better. Started going on my toes. Then I can see the blood is flowing much, much better. So, so we finished training, we went back to the hotel, then continue my treatment. The next day I brought my trainers again. <laughs> so, so at that time, uh, uh, the coach Milo, Milo Vak was telling me that oh, like we still have one month, so take your time. Even you know, the coach has so much confidence in me, so he told me even if it's one week to start the tournament, you will play. So just don't hurt yourself to to go and start your treatment again. You know, just be calm, be careful, and all that. But I went through the physios. The physios did well. In, 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 in that camp. So uh, I was feeling much better as they go by. And and like it's left with like three days to play our first friendly game. Then then when we were going, something I felt like, okay, let me have my football boots. So I took my football boots along with me. So they started training and then I my normal jogging, I started doing and, and I was feeling good. I was even shocked that uh, it, it happened and then and then they finish everything all this 
sections and then you know normally the, you have to finish with a game a small sided game so they were playing the small sided game they, they will go five minutes one minute break five minutes they have like four times so they did two times and then i told the coach okay put me in as a joker yeah and then it was like no no don't force it i said no i'll play so i went into the game started giving passes and it's fine started shooting started doing that. and then they were all shocked after the uh, after the training he came to me and asked me am i really sure that i was hurt injured and i said yes, yes of course the, the mri showed that i was injured and then after that continued all the training i was featured into all the in in all the training sessions our first friendly game i started and played 90 minutes in the in the in the in the in the first friendly game. so i was fine i was looking good my pain and everything in my ankle was fine my ankle was good i can jump land do everything twist turning and everything i was i was really fine but during the tournament too, I had uh, another knock, <laughs> which I broke my mm. uh, bone, one bone on my foot. Mm. Uh, then, then at, so I, I got injured during the tournament, and then uh, that's why I missed the semi-final. I see. So at, at, at that time, I have to put uh, meat, raw meat, I on see. top of my foot, wrap it up before I put my socks, my boots. And then go on the pitch and play. So when I play against Nigeria and everything, that's another trade secret. Another raw meat, yes. raw meat on raw your meat. In injury. Yeah, yeah, on the foot. I see. That you, that's what I. Uh, that yeah, that I reminds me of uh, Anna Kovacevic, who used the uh, horse placenta to <laughs> treat some of our players uh, back then. The Serbian woman. Yeah, mm, yeah. Mm. Uh, I uh, see. We used to have uh, a physio in uh, in heart. Mm. Uh, he used that on me. That one time we had the game, and then I had a knock on my foot. And there was the pain was very severe if I touched the ball. So he he used that uh, method, and then I felt good. So I decided to use that in the tournament as well, which mm. was was really really helpful. So so you've played at the Afcon, and and every other time we go and try, and uh, in your generation we we failed as well to win it. Yeah, and it's fair. a subject that. It's coming up every last week. We discussed it. Joado was seated right where you were. We were discussing <laughs> it again. <laughs> Yeah, for me, for me, I think, and when you look at it, we were, we, we are always close to win it, winning it, and then something will happen, you know. Uh, uh, when we pl we played uh, the final against Ivory Coast again, the penalty shootout, they miss two, and we need to score the last one to to win the cup. It couldn't happen. They score, and, and you know, when you look at it, there is something that, uh, for me, I, I know, I know, I don't want to mention luck. Because luck, you have to work for it, you know. You have to work for luck. And and from my time, we've had before me, we've had great teams, you know. Uh, before my time, people are craving for the World Cup. Our time too, we had a very good squad. Uh, uh, we had good moments. Uh, we we qualified the country f to the first uh, uh, World Cup. But when you look at it in the in that Afcon, that same year, that Afcon. We, we, were, we were out for like first three games. Yeah. You know? But but when we went to the World Cup, we were amazing again in the World Cup. So so I don't know, but uh, it will happen. It will surely happen. How you did know? you psych yourself up? Um, you know, during the World Cup when we qualified, you you qual you contributed heavily to the campaign. Yeah. And because of the incident uh, that happened at the Afcon preceding the World Cup, you 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 were you couldn't make it. Um, you know, I mean. Uh, by calculation, you still could have been in the team, but but you were not <laughs> in the team. Um, how did you psych yourself out of that you know that pain of not playing at the World Cup? Uh, it was it was very difficult. Even even till today, it's, when I think back, it's it's, it's still very difficult. Uh, for me, when you ask me today that uh, uh, are you happy with your career, I would say yes. But apart from that World Cup appearance, you know, every player's dream is to be in that major tournament which is the senior world cup and and you can see when you're sitting back watching the world cup the way the play players are uh, very eager players are giving everything leaving everything on the pitch you can see how important that tournament is and and i'm not part of the the, the squad not to even taste it you know it's it's something that uh, for me i think it's it's really uh, it's a lot but uh, in whole i i always say that Maybe it's it's good to happen. Maybe if I go in that World Cup, maybe I cannot. I wouldn't be able to continue my career. Something might have happened. So 
maybe it's 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 a blessing in, in disgust. Now, um, now you're looking at the national team from from different perspectives. You've played there, and now you. I mean, you've you've in in our conversations, you've you've spoken about the desire to 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 be there one day, playing a role. That's how far you want to take your coaching career. Yeah, um, national team is, is 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 the main thing because we know that uh, Ghana uh, national teams are national team and then and then and then club level as well. Uh, before going into coaching, my my aim is to win trophies. You know, my aim is to win trophies. My aim is to help every team that uh, I, will, I will be appointed to uh, develop players and then uh, win trophies uh, for them. I I want to be a coach that. Will, will 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 develop players and be winning games, winning games, planning to uh, doing calculations and everything to 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 win leagues. You know, because you know when your uh, league matches are a lot, you need to play a lot of games, so you need a lot of calculation, a lot, and also uh, 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 loads loads on your players. You need to manage all those things because the games are a lot, so you don't need to. Saying that oh this player is my key player, so all the time I need to push him on the pitch and all that. So these are some of the key things that uh, uh, coaches need to watch. Loads on your players and also uh, trying to manage them well throughout the season and then winning winning trophies. My my aim is to win trophies. That's that's how why we develop good players, elite players, and then also uh, win trophies. Great stuff. So the same. This is the same Black Stars team we're still talking about and. Um, so CK Akono, you worked under him at Accra Hearts of Oak when you returned yep. for your final stint. Yep. Um, so the kind of coach he is from your assessment as, as a player who played under him and what you think he can, he can do with, with Ghana? Yeah, uh, with CK, for me, I, I played under him and also I, I worked with him for one game uh, in Temale when... Uh, the naming of uh, the renaming of, the, renaming uh, of the, the stadium to Ali Muhammad Sports Stadium. I was yeah. the assistant uh, that took the uh, uh, Southern Sector uh, National Team players. Um, I work with him. So with him, it's it's someone that uh, looking at him, if 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 worked under Right to Dream as well. So Right Right to Dream for me, I think Right to Dream uh, developed him a little bit. Uh, now, when I started working with Ratu, that's when I realized where it's got because before I was coaching, my durations in training and everything is a little bit high. But he told me, I remember that day, he told me that, okay, uh, 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 he told me durations, he told me my durations is too uh, uh, limited or short? No, or too long. Too long, okay. Too long, you should do it very short. He was the one, and then when I went to Ratu Dream 2, that's when one of the key things I came to my mind that, oh, CK have told me uh, uh, already, and also the way his relationship with 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 players is is amazing. So for me, I think he have uh, what it takes to, and you can see uh, as a folk was very short, but when he's, you can see when he went to Kotoko, he was doing very 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 well with Kotoko before he had uh, 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 his problems with with them. For, so for me, I think it's a very good choice. If been if played as a player before. He's played in the national team as well. He's captain the national team, uh, so he, under he will understand very well the players very well in this position. Now he's the coach. He will understand the players very very well because he's been in their shoes before. So he know at a certain point he will know how the players are feeling and he will know the right things that uh, the players will need and the country need. So with me, I will uh, I will be very happy to see uh, Ghana giving him a longer term. He have a two years contract with the with the national team. At least he is building a team. We should have patience with our, our coaches. Give them time. Let them. How much would be ideal for you in this situation? How many me, more? How many years? For me to to see what a coach can really do is three years for me. Okay. So you would have preferred that CK Akono got a three-year deal. Three years. Okay. One year, the first year will be how the players will understand him. How Ghanaians will even understand him. Yeah. He is developing players. You know when you take a team. First of all, when you take a team, the talking on the pitch will be a lot because the players doesn't know what you are bringing on board. It's now that you have to explain to them what you are bringing on board and all that. But with time, players will get used to everything. Your weekly periodization, they will know that, okay, this week uh, we, we have, we've had a game, recovery team, uh, uh, the players that have not uh, 
did not have more minutes he had to uh, train fully players so so with all that every coach is different so with all that that's when the players will get used to you they will know that okay this time when when we are in this level of of the league this is how the co- we we going to approach our training we going to approach our games even your team talks players will get used to it so it will be very easy for the coach and then that's when players will, will, will adapt to what you want them to to, to to deliver on the pitch so with time then the players will get used to you you the coach will get used to the players that uh, will go around uh, sit down with them uh, explain to them the type of players that you believe can help you achieve what you want to achieve with the team and uh, work closely with them and for me i think it will work and also one thing uh, if you also do try to involve the physios uh, doctors uh, uh, nutritionists and 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 uh, nutritionists and then uh, uh, nutritionists it's, it's a secondary matter yeah, yeah. but in terms of uh, on, on the pitch you need okay. to involve them when you are planning your session yeah every training session when you are planning you need to involve your doctor your, your, your physiotherapist uh, then your two coaches one one two assistant coaches yeah. one assistant coach is not enough two coaches we call them shadow coaches when you are planning your section when you are in the in, in, in the training ground you need two shadow coaches because let's say you are working from uh, uh, building up from the back building up from the back means uh, that will be the first second first focus the secondary focus will be pressing up from because when you are building up when you are trying to build up from the back you need pressure you need players that will to put pressure on your back that will allow bring the best out of your team that you are looking that they have to build up from back and as a coach you cannot only watch the main team can be building up from the back right but you need coaches that will also focus on let's say you give assignment to uh, your assistant coach okay you have to check how players will be pressing you understand tell the assistant coach you t- focus on players that are pressing i will be focusing on the building up from the back you see the third coach will have to check what running runs in the box and all that so when you are planning your sections you need to involve all those players you know telling them and they have to you have to give them the opportunity to to contribute as well give them the opportunity to contribute in training when he's, he spotted something you see that one player is not moving well there are opportun- things that he has to do he cannot stop the training but he can rather walk into the pitch and then call the player and then tell mm. talk to the player tell him and, so, and so, so with that you have broad yeah so uh, so as it uh, stands now we we are um you know we we have one assistant coach david duncan you know yeah we have we have one he can be shadow coach and uh he, he should involve him more in mm. his uh, uh sections when he's planning his section and all that now um in the last week we've heard loads of news um one of them being kevin prince boating indicating that he would like to make a return to the black stars team if he gets the opportunity would like to play again for ghana what's your view on it i mean considering everything that has happened with him and all of that oh yeah um he's still a ghanian and uh you know i i i heard uh, i watched one of his interviews he still have so much respect for the country he, even though things happened when he was playing for the national team and all that a lot of people most people will think oh he have no respect for ghana and all that. but he's still a ghanaian and uh, listening to him for me i think he have so much you know he believed that ghana has given him a, a, a lot of uh, uh, opportunities bigger mm-hmm. platforms and all that ghana helped him to 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 enjoy to smell the world cup which every player which he believed in this interview he said that uh, uh, with him he realized that there is no way he can play for the german national team so he made a very good de- decision in playing for ghana so so for him i think if if the coach still believe that he still have something to help him and he's playing very well in his team he's still a ghanian every the national team is for every ghanian that is performing well but but one thing i want to know i want to see players in the national team players that are performing well in their clubs players that are doing well week in week out in their players to be to be to be called to their national teams now you you played 
in the Ghana Premier League, uh, you know, after going around, playing in Europe and all of that, you came back to play in the Ghana Premier League. In recent times, I mean, would hear, oh, Sule Muntari is training with Hearts. There's a possibility he may play for Hearts. Um, I haven't had a conversation with him to know the official position. But, um, you know, we saw you do that. Uh, you know, Asamajan is also around. Are these people you'd, I mean, would, would you advise them to, to play come back home, play in the Ghana Premier League? Yeah, why not? Why not? For me, I think it's going to help the league a lot. It's going to bring back uh, a lot of fans to the various stadiums uh, because people look up to them a lot. Uh, they have a lot of fans. Uh, so for me, and with the experience, everything that they've acquired throughout their journey, uh, for me, I think it's going to help the young players in the league as well. It's not going to be easy because of... Uh, 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 the culture and everything uh, uh, will be different from what they already know outside in uh, out there in Europe. Mm. Uh, Ghana, the mentality and everything is different. It's going to be very tough. But with them coming to the league and playing in the league, for me, I think it's going to have a, a very huge boost uh, mm. to the to the to the stadium. I, I, for instance, I'll be very happy to go and sit uh, and, and 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 watch them playing in the in in, in the league. And for, I know that uh, most people would like to go to the stadium and then watch uh, set players play with all their experiences. Uh, uh, not only them, you know, we have a lot of players that they've been in Europe, they played in Europe now, they don't have a contract in Europe, they, they are in Ghana, but they don't have confidence to come and play in the league. Why, why not? Don't be shy. Come, come and then enjoy your football. You know, it's the same uh, game. And with that, that will also help you. Why not? It will help you. When you look at it, Sam Johnson, Sam Johnson was about to finish his career. That's when he had this opportunity to, to, to go to uh, uh, Europe and play his football. And he stayed there and played for a very long time. So it can, it can also help uh, most of them. And uh, for me, I will be very happy. Mm -hmm. and, and me coming back to play uh, in Hearts, throughout my career, I wanted to finish at Hearts. Okay. And uh, that's the more mo mo reason why I came down and played. Is there a possibility you could have stayed longer at Hearts? At Hearts of Oak? Oh, yeah. Why not? But, but you know, it got to a point that, uh, mm. you know, age was not on my side. Okay. My recoveries from trainings and games mm. uh, is not quick enough. So sometimes my recovery is very slow. So uh, that's why I decided to, 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 to stop. But for me, if, if I can get a coach at that time, if, if you know, in Europe, when players are aging, uh, their coaches will just cut down their their uh, minutes at training, make sure uh, they they train they train very limited limited trainings and then look fresh in in in, in games. With that, it will it will help you to look fresh in the games. But if you are going to train normal Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, normal uh, training program, the when it gets to uh, uh, the main uh, game on weekends. Uh, your recoveries are very slow, so you you cannot keep up in training. But uh, if they can get coaches that will understand them, make sure they manage them well, I think we're going to see good football every weekend. Okay, so the man you hear in the background will be here on Joy 99.7 FM later on. But for now, let me do your text messages. Mm. Nuts, thanks for the good work as uh, Lai Kings and I feel his pain about missing out on the World Cup. He should continue working hard. Who knows? He will be there as a coach. This is from Felix in Kolebu. That's sounding very, very prophetic, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we'll do some more of the messages here. Remember, it's uh, zero three zero, sorry zero two four four um, three four zero four three seven. Now, um, Inko Joseph has sent a, a bit of a lengthy one. I liked Lai's fighting spirit when he was in the national jersey on May night two thousand and one. I was uh, the storekeeper distributing uh, in a company in Dansuman when we were supposed to receive some consignment on that day. So I had a pre-arrangement with the driver of the other company on May 8th to bring the goods earlier uh, because I wanted to be at the stadium. Truly, the driver bought it, brought it at 10 a.m. After supervising it for it to be offloaded, I handed over to leave for the stadium around 2 p.m. From nowhere, another truck just landed with a heavier load. Before, my boss therefore refused me, uh, refused the request for me to go to the stadium. And uh, I almost cried, but knowing the second, not knowing the second load was 
my savior okay glory be to god okay thank you very much for uh, that message um it looks like loads and loads of people have a lot more um in terms of you know experiences on may 9 that we do not know. i mean those who who were not in the stadium also have their stories okay now um this other one says uh, it's from patrick Quow. he says uh Laie was an extremely talented player i miss his dribbling skills please ask his opinion regarding the choice of ck as coach of the black stars okay now he's uh he's just treated uh that or touched on that now uh citizen nuts greetings to you and uh champion Laie kingston he gave us wonderful moments and memories which we cherish so much please ask him about the comparison being made between party and acn and which which i I, which I think is hugely disrespectful to ACN. Uh, please let him tell us about how great ACN was and uh, how it meant, what it meant to play alongside him. This is from Delali in North Kanishi. Okay, uh, maybe we should do that now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. You know, they they all have their strength mm. and weaknesses. But for me, I think uh, I'm 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 really really privileged to to play alongside Michael Essien. Mm. The the reason why I said that. Was and we all we all know that he did very well with Chelsea when Chelsea had a, a fantastic team, strong mm. team, you know. But he, he was regular in the team, uh, uh, playing week in week out. And you know, for me, I think my Michaelisian uh, Pate have his strength and he's done very well and he's still doing very well. But Michaelisian. Uh, it, 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 okay. it's something have else. you it's have something you else. have you thought about putting together your best eleven all time best eleven for the Black Stars? Have you thought um, about it in my time or well th throughout? I mean all time. I mean you watching as a it's boy, you play or like well generally in everything generally. put together. Yeah, have well, you have you and all those people will come to play? I see, I uh, see. So so you you have okay. So you have a, a best eleven from your generation. And the best eleven from when you were a boy, is that it? Or you you haven't really thought about it? Yeah, I've, thought not, about I've not thought about it. But, but in my time, I know players that uh, I know they played uh, a major role mm. in the national team, and we, they did very well. And for me, I think uh, I was lucky to be part of that squad. <laughs> so I uh, see. Uh, with that, it's very easy for me to <laughs> to name them. <laughs> Okay, tell me. So go ahead. If you, if you, um, if yeah, your your time, for instance. Yeah, my my time uh, will be uh, my brother, Richard Kingston. In post. In post, yeah. Mm. And uh, John Pencil, um, Ansedu Sape, um, John Mensa, mm. Eric Ado. Then when you come to the midfield, we have Michael Asian, Stephen Apia. Ghana, we, you know, we play 4 4 2. Mm. Michael Asian, Stephen Apia. Me on the right, Sule Mutari on the left. Then we have Matuya Mwan Asamwaja. Great. Yeah. I see. In my time. <laughs> <laughs> wow. It's, it's going to be very tough. Okay. It's going to be very tough. Kiddy will also be here later on today. That's why here on Joy, we are your friend throughout the week. That's all we're just telling you. We are your friend throughout the week. Think let's do some more of your messages here as we host Lai Kingston here on the Joy Sports Link. Um, the unprofessionalism on the part of our security services needs to be tackled. It is still lacking and woefully inadequate. May the souls of the departed rest in peace. And kudos to Lai. I have refereed some of his uh, products here in connecticut and i was impressed one thing though they need to be serious and always think of the sky being their limit our future looks bright this is upoku from connecticut usa Okay, so there's this one uh, from um, okay, let's let's do this. it's from Kelly Inosu. Kelly says hi Nathaniel. Please ask Lai Kingston if he remembers his goal against Nigeria when we beat them four one in the friendly in London. <laughs> <laughs> that that time that time you know I. I their goalkeeper, I don't like him at all. When you're yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you but, know, but that, are, are you are we going to discuss that? Are you uh, going to okay? So go know, ahead. Tell I, me you why know, you don't. You like. know that time before the game. Mm. You know I played in uh, uh, 
uh, Israel. Okay, yeah, Apoel very Tel Aviv. Well. Okay, very and then well. That time he was keeping for Apoel Tel Aviv. Okay, you know he was keeping for Apoel Tel Aviv. So mm. most of my friends, the the fans that love me, they grew love me yeah. over there. They they happen to love him as well. So oh, okay. during the game, they started uh, talking about me, and then it was like, oh, Lai is not a good player. Okay, that can score score against. So against before me. the game, I see. So you you wanted to make before sure. the game, they phoned me and then told me that oh, this is what he said. I said okay, no problem. The game is on, is coming on. So after the game, we will talk. So I have it at the back of my mind that I have to score against score against him. I quite remember. Yeah. yeah, I took the ball from the right side. Mm. I was. Right, on Vincent the, and Yama, rather, the, yes, yeah, yeah, Vincent yeah. And Yama, yeah. yes. I was, I was on the line, mm. long ball from I think Swiss switch play. I took a touch, it's in, it's in the final third, yeah. So I have to take the ball across the 18 yard balls and then had a shot with my left, mm. lower bottom of, con, uh, of the post. It's in, wow, wow. yeah. <laughs> it must have felt very, very good. I mean, yeah, 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 especially I felt, scoring against, yeah, yeah, I felt, I felt very good. People were watching, they were watching, they were streaming it live. Wow. In, in, in Israel as well. So immediately after the game, they phoned me in and then, yeah, so action, you know, not about with the mouth. You have to <laughs> show it on the film. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a lot of good day and good show always. Hello to Bra Lai7. Uh, please ask him how he felt not playing at the World Cup uh, before, although he's, it was very good during his time. And what happened between him and CK Akuno at heart? Does he think CK Akuno can be a success with the Black Stars? God in the North Kadeshi, well, he, he's answered every bit of that question except yeah. uh, the relationship between you and uh, CK Akuno at heart. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we have, we have, now we have a very good relationship. And even before, before that, but that time he, he was the coach and then he felt he doesn't need me in his team, which I strongly respect that, which I strongly respect that because uh, uh, he was the coach. Mm. And then he felt that uh, he doesn't need me in the squad, you know. So I respect that, and then uh, it's passed. But we still, after that, we are still in a very good relationship. Anytime we meet, uh, we know that is is a job that uh, uh, he have, and then he did what he have to do. Mm. It's finished. We we put it at the back of us, and we. we we're moving on. All right. Uh, 0302216541. 0302216541. Get through to us and uh, let's uh, continue this chat with uh, Laie Kingston. There's this message from Kojo in Medina. All right. Kojo in Medina says, uh, Hello, Nathaniel. How are you? Uh, thanks for asking, Kojo. Um, I just like how you uh, read my messages carefully, and I must say, I listen to Joy and Asim Passports because of you and Eric Asiedu, respectively. Keep it up. As for Laie Kingston, I say he's um, one of the five players I love so much in the Black Stars. It pains me, though, that he couldn't play in any of the World Cup matches for Ghana. We all know what happened, but I'm very happy he has moved on, and God will see him through his coaching career. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, thank you, thank you, thank you, Kojo. Now, let's talk about punditry work. Uh, you you discovered a new, you know, we, we started punditry with you here at Joy Sports when we had the, uh, uh, we started with you on radio, and then we went on television when we had uh, the AFCON franchise at the time. Um, you recently did the whole tournament at, at Supersport. Yeah. Tell me about that experience. Uh, first of all, I have to uh, give thanks to uh, every media uh, in Ghana that helped me to uh, develop me as a pundit as well mm. uh, give me the opportunity to uh, uh, give me confidence to, to sit in front of uh, <laughs> the, the TV and the camera and all that uh, you guys uh, have played a very big role mm. uh, in my career um, you know that's why I always say that sometimes uh, we, we, we have something that we don't know and and sometimes people have to uh, recover that thing for you, giving you that opportunity, and, and you, the person, to uh, uh, accepting it and then working on it and then build up on wherever the people uh, put you on. Uh, GTV GTV gave me a lot of opportunity. They they they've been putting mm. me on their uh, most of their uh, uh, when there is tournament, they've been putting me on part of the uh, punditry team. punditry team and yeah. all that. So. With all these things, they developed me a lot mm. until I had a call that uh, uh, all those times uh, um, uh, Super Sports have been monitoring all those things and they, they felt that uh, uh, I, will, I will be okay to, 
to come to South Africa and then represent Ghana as well. You know but you were it. supposed to do only, I mean, for as long as Ghana stayed in the tournament because yeah. and Ghana Ghana did not. Yeah, go actually, through. actually, actually, that was the contract. Uh, mm. The contract I signed with Super Sports uh, was uh, if Ghana is out of the tournament, not only me, all, all the pandas that came to represent their countries because they bring players that have played in their national teams to come to South Africa to to mm. to, to to do the punditry work, job, work. Mm. but uh, my contract was if Ghana goes out then it's done th it's done my mm. contract is done I have to return home but uh, the moment Ghana was out I was coming uh, on my way back to the hotel myself and JJ Okocha and then I had a email that uh, uh, from Super Sports that they will be very happy to have me till the end of the tournament which wow. is which is very surprising. I'm I'm type of person that I'm not satisfied with everything I do. Yeah. Even even though I've achieved whatever I want to achieve, I still want more. So I don't I don't normally I don't like watching my interviews. Mm. I don't like going back to see whatever what I've done watching my games. Because sometimes even even though people will be mm. praising me and all that, when I watch it, mm. I, I I feel I've not done done enough. So I don't like. Uh, uh, watching everything I do re uh, again. So when I had that uh, message, uh, I felt so happy, and and that's when uh, the management called me and told me uh, they are really really happy mm. uh, with what I've given them. So uh, not only this time, but in future, they are happy too. And even at the end of the tournament, uh, we had a, mm. a meeting. I had a meeting with the. So there's likely well, we are going to see you in the future doing more. Oh, oh, hopefully, hopefully. <laughs> if my job, if my job now will, will permit, permit you. Okay. And, and All right. Let, let's get on the phone line and, and speak to our first caller. Hello. Good afternoon. Hello. Good afternoon. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Good afternoon. You can hear me. Great. Um, please go ahead. Uh, apologies for keeping you for a while. No worries. No, ma'am. Hello. Um, a bit of difficulty there. Zero three zero two two one six five four one. Zero three zero two two one six five four one. Um, in terms of the journey, I mean, you've clearly said that you want to produce great players and also win trophies. Um, club action. You you want to? Is this something that you'd want to do to, to start it off? Um, okay. Before before you answer that question, let, let me go back to the phone line. Hello. Good afternoon. Hello, good afternoon. Yeah, um, my name is Nathaniel. How are you? Very well, Nathaniel. Nice. Um, I've been listening to Lai Kingston. And seriously, uh, you know, I'm not that fan of football, even though I love watching Black Stars and stuff like that. But I think it's, um, it's, it's the next coach we have to look out for. I love his presentation. He's really done really, really well. And I'm going to monitor and follow him. Congratulations to him so much. Thank you. Thank you. Zero three zero two two one six five four one. Hello, good afternoon. Hello, good afternoon. Hello, good afternoon. Uh, thanks for joining us on the Joy Sports Link. Yeah, thank you very much, too. Uh, my name is Peter T. Please go ahead, Peter. Yeah. Uh, like you say, I'm fine, sir. Uh, now I want to ask you this question. Uh, how those days? Uh, it's time, maybe, I think your brother is the goalkeeper, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, each time, or at any time that uh, maybe either blaster uh, you were playing, and uh, uh, your brother, uh, you know, is being scored, uh, how, how do you feel, you know, as a brother? Or sometimes, uh, maybe uh, in the selection room, you know, there are so much that the coach takes you through. And maybe he's on bench. Maybe he's not fe uh, featured in that man. How do you feel? And then also, have you ever felt bad that the two of you, you bear the same name, you are brothers, and then you are playing the same team, or you have been selected to play the same team as Blaster? Have you ever felt bad? Thank you. Okay. All right. Um, so, so please go ahead. Uh, go ahead with um, that. Uh, thank you very much. You know, you know, uh, 
we have a lot of brothers playing football, but it's not easy to see the same brothers uh, being in the same team. Uh, talking of uh, playing in the Black Stars team, Ghana Senior National Team as well. I'm, I'm sure uh, uh, brothers have done it before us. Uh, Joado and his brother, once they were together, myself and uh, Richard, now we are we 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 we've played, and then and then and then also currently we have uh, uh, Ayus, the Ayu brothers. Uh, even even them, they they at the point 2010 World Cup, they have three Ayus in the in the in the yeah. in the, in the, in the, in yeah. the national team. Yeah. So so it's a it's a joy, and it's not easy to have brothers playing in the same team. So for me, being playing alongside my brother. Uh, it's, it's, it's a joy playing uh, with and him. He and he was also asking about how you feel when a goal is scored against your brother. Um, you know, not 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 to be my brother. You know, even even if you are playing, you don't want a goal a goal to be scored against you. You know, so so it, it, that doesn't mean it's my brother. I have to have more uh, like different feeling and all that. He is there to uh, perform, and if a goal is scored against him, I have to feel the same as any other person it's nothing different but apart from me being with him on the same pitch it's amazing uh, i think I'm, I'm always excited to be play alongside not only the national team i started playing uh, uh with him mm. when when i signed for accra great olympics, olympics he yeah, was our goalkeeper mm. and my first time being on the same pitch with with him against kotoko i felt very very happy okay uh final caller okay unfortunately unfortunately we missed out uh, hello good afternoon yeah, good afternoon. Okay, you are our final caller. Please do this in 20 seconds as much as thank possible. Thank you, thank you. This co-commentator back again. Like, I'm so, I'm so good in good message, Sami Tuga. I hope in Aisuba, I saw at that time, Sami Tuga was part of a key player in, uh, in your squad. Quickly, let me go to the main night situation. Um, I also happen to be one of the fortunate guys who survived. Because mine, I would say that God just took me out of the... Yeah, the event zone because I had a friend who's a hard to full supporter and I'm a, I'm a Kotoko fan. I waited for him to come to Accra. He's from Tema. We go, we went to the stadium together. He wanted us to go to where the incident happened. But God being so good, he dragged us out to the opposite side and we survived. So this uh, memory, I always thank God that we survived. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, Lai, uh, in the final minute, um, you know, a long way to go. I mean, you've been doing a lot uh, going back and forth with the under-18 team at Right to Dream. Um, a good future and um, life life is uh, manageable and good, at least, now. Yeah, for now, mm. I, mean, I'm, I'm, I guess I want to be, uh, take it a day at a time. Mm. Uh, as a coach, I want to develop uh, very well before I take uh, like a bigger role mm. as, a, as a coach. Uh, right to dream for me. I think right to dream is the best place for me to uh, develop as a coach because of mm. uh, the way they handle their things and all that. Uh, uh, they taking me through a lot. Uh, they helping me to achieve my UEFA badges. Uh, if not the the virus, the uh, pandemic that is uh, we, we have in the world, uh, I would have been in uh, my UEFA course by now. But uh, it's still in the process, uh, uh, and also uh, it's a place that. Every coach, when you are there, you 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 do. So I'm I'm really really happy to be part of. Uh, and then I'm really really happy to uh, acquire this job, and I'm looking forward to uh, finish everything, give everything uh, for mm. the academy, and then uh, make sure I develop myself very well before taking major team. And and finally, your family. How's how's it going? And uh, How's life generally? I mean, uh, we hear all the stories. Oh, he had money when he was playing. Now we don't <laughs> see much. And how, how's life generally? I um, mean, for you, li li life has been very good to me. Uh, uh, I'm I'm human, you know. Uh, people make mistakes, but for me, I think uh, uh, I surrounded myself with uh, smart people. So in my career, they they really helped me to uh, do one or two investments. So after my career, I will not suffer. Uh, so now, now for me, I think uh, my my investment uh, is helping me a lot, and also and also it's very important for everybody to to, to work. So like my job to now it's, it's it's good. I'm happy. Uh, right to Dream have offered me a very good job, and uh, the content in the contract is very good. So <laughs> <laughs> if you're not going to tell us about it, then please. <laughs> <laughs> <Very> <laughs> 
<laughs> you know, yeah. so, so I'm, I'm really, really happy to be part of it. Mm. And uh, mm. uh, the family is happy, the kids. Yeah. Uh, uh, at the moment, they are at home, but they are learning from, from, from home. So this yeah. is the time that, I know it's a difficult time, so this is the time that I will have time to uh, uh, spend a lot of time with them. You know? So uh, we're happy. My wife is, is working every day. And he's happy with his job as well. He's, she also, uh, she also supports home we, from from his, his his job as well. So it's very good, and uh, we are happy. Mm. Mm. I see. Now I don't know how to Part time Christian, you won't fight full time devil. Thank you all very much for listening to the Joy Sports Link. Laie, thank you so so much for honoring the invitation. Thanks for having me. So thanks to all of you for uh, the listening. We always keep it here. The very romantic Hannah Odami is here with the Joy Headline News at 2. And of course, the man in the background, Kofi Kenata, will be here on the show. Kitty will be here. My man and your man, Hama of the last two, will also be here. It's a very interesting and packed show. George Quay takes over after Hannah Odami. So let's go to the news now. My name is Nathaniel Atto. And I have love. Coming up.